This is Air Talk. I'm Larry Mantle. It's holiday week as we lead up to Christmas and Hanukkah. And that means, of course, for many folks, large family gatherings, friends from out of town coming in, or you taking off out of town to visit with others. But as much as this can be a joyous time, it can also be the source of a great deal of stress. Do you have one of those family members or even someone who you consider a friend but just drives you nuts, the so-called toxic person or the person that kind of takes you out of yourself to react in a way that you don't particularly like. We're going to be talking with uh, a woman who's an expert on this subject, has written about it, spoken about it. She's appeared on countless television programs and radio shows, Dr. Judith Orloff. She's a psychiatrist and assistant clinical professor of psychiatry at UCLA. She's the author of numerous books, including Dr. Judith Orloff's Guide to Intuitive Healing. Her new book, uh, which is out now in paperback, Positive Energy, 10 Extraordinary Prescriptions for Transforming Fatigue, Stress, and Fear into Vibrant Strength and Love. Also, not bad tips for the holidays. She joins us on Air Talk. Dr. Orloff, thank you very much. Good to have you with us. Oh, it's good to be here, Larry. Well, let's talk about some of the dynamics that come up this time of year. Obviously, all of us are in a little bit of a different psychological state, if you will, because of all the things we bring from our childhood holiday experiences to the season. What goes on psychodynamically this time of year? Well, what happens is that you're around the holiday dinner table and you're around all your relatives, so all of your old issues from childhood will pop up. And the kind of people I talk about um, are energy vampires, and these are the people who can suck your energy dry in a variety of ways. So whatever you felt as a child (laughs) could be fired up again at that holiday dinner table with these uh, uh, relatives who can uh, drain you. Well, and, and so these are people who can send us back into that feeling as though we're you know, eight years old again exactly. and, and being you know, <laughs> backed into a corner or whatever it is or, or, or feeling that we've been made to react in a way that we don't want to react in. Exactly. Our buttons are pushed and we go for it. And so I wrote Positive Energy in the chapter on energy vampires to tell people what types of energy vampires there are and how to avoid them so you can be ready for that holiday dinner table. Now, when you use that term energy vampires, are there people who aren't really typically that way, but there's something about the dynamic between, I'm thinking maybe the mother-daughter or the father-son or something, that this isn't normally the way that they relate to the world, but this aspect of them comes into play in this close relationship. Oh, yes. The worst comes out with family members. Absolutely. But there are different types of energy vampires, and the signs that you're around one is that you'll be talking to somebody and you feel like taking a nap. (laughs) 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 Or your energy bottoms out, or you you feel terrible about yourself and so there are different types of energy vampires i talk about one for instance is the drama queen somebody who wears you out with off the chart dramas and you're sitting there listening to this person feeling exhausted and if you were to look at it objectively you'd say this really this isn't that big a deal these aren't that but for some reason you end up caught up in in these mini dramas that the other person's having oh the mini dramas their car just got towed again they broke up with their boyfriend for the 10th time and the way to deal with this type of energy vampire is don't give them any juice don't ask them how they're doing whatever you do leave that door closed <laughs> leave that door closed that's right well if you'd like to talk with Dr. Judith Orloff psychiatrist and professor at UCLA about how to deal with what are some of the more problematic circumstances in which you find yourself over the holiday, give us a call. Maybe you are dreading that pickup at the airport you're going to be making later today or tomorrow. You just know what's coming your way and you need some advice. Give us a call. We're at 866-893-KPCC. That's 866 893 Five seven two two. It's an opportunity for you to get some some very personalized advice on how to deal with these difficult circumstances. Now, what what advice do you give uh, to people? And I don't know whether you see clients in a clinical setting. You have patients who you, you talk with personally about yes, these I issues. Do. Okay. Well, you you have a client comes to you and they're describing you know what they're anticipating in the way of one of these negative interactions. What you call an energy vampire. What what do you advise to them about minimizing exposure? I mean, versus just uh, 
not inviting that person or staying away from that person versus managing the situation. How do you make that call? Yes, well, if it's possible, if a client comes to me you know, and says, I have this energy vampire in my life, if it's a peripheral person, I say eliminate that person. For instance, one of my patients went to a hairdresser and all she would talk about are wrinkles and sagging and aging while she's getting her hair cut. And this <laughs> is really negative. And my client walked out feeling exhausted and horrible about herself. And so it's very simple to change that hairdresser because you don't want all that negativity around you. So you make a, a choice that's life affirming. And it's harder will, with family, though. It's much harder. But those are peripheral people that you can and must change. You know, I wrote the book because there's an epidemic of exhaustion in our country. And people are exhausted, burnt out, tired, depressed, always recovering from their lives. And part of that comes from the energy vampires, from relationships that are toxic. And so I really encourage people to take steps to be around positive, loving, supportive people as much as possible um, and avoid the, the drainers or else learn to manage them as with the holidays coming up. One of the things I find for myself so that I don't get caught up in other things like this is I really need time to myself. I'm, yes. I'm one of those and I don't know that everybody needs it. I really need solitude. Yes. So I sort of center myself. I sort of, I know I'm reacting out of, out of, out of myself and not just two other people and I mean is that something that works for a lot of people? Oh yes I'm like you I require a lot of solitude and that helps me get my center so before any kind of holiday interaction you might want to take a few minutes to meditate or get quiet or listen to beautiful music or look up at the sky and, and be have gratitude for your life and to feel good so that when you go in there you're coming from a positive place and you don't rush into that holiday gathering frantic or rushing or overwrought so if you come from a calm, centered place to begin with, you'll be a lot better off with toxic people. I also find it helps me better understand or maybe more honestly see what my motivations are in things because yes. it's easy to do things because you think you should or you're caught up in what's going on around you as opposed to standing back and saying, well, why am I doing this in the first place? I mean, is this something I really want to do? Is yes. this Am I really helping someone else or myself? Or Why am I taking this action? And, right. and I, I kind of need to get away often to find that place in myself. Oh, yes. I mean, I am a firm believer in that. And I, I recommend a three-minute meditation. Um, if you're at a family dinner table and you're having a vampire or a draining person attack you, you can always go to the bathroom and meditate. You can say, excuse me, I have to go to the bathroom, which is a quiet place it, you can close the door you take a few deep breaths you center yourself you get yourself into a more positive state of mind you go back again and deal with them from that place very good well let's take a listener call emily in irvine you're on air talk with dr judith orloff hi dr orloff hi larry hi hi emily well my situation is, is probably a common one which is that i'm very close with my mother she lives three thousand miles away but when she comes to visit uh, and is in my house, we revert back to this very childish relationship where she parents and I act like a teenager. I have grown children also, and um, for some reason, she just knows how to get under my skin. Little comments like, that's an interesting sweater, or, <laughs> wow, there's a lot of salt in your food. Um, I find myself act misbehaving and, and acting rude, and my husband always called me out on it and said, you know, says, why can't you just blow her off? Why can't you just not let her bother you? And I, I guess my question for you is, is it time to sit her down and confront her, or is this something that I just have to be the bigger one about and, and let her roll off my back? Well, I wouldn't confront her. What I would do is begin to set limits and boundaries with her, but you do it in a very light, humorous way, and you deflect the comments. If you don't go for it, then she won't be as interested in saying the comments. But because you're reacting and she knows she can push your buttons, then you're off and running. So if you look at her and you say something like, yeah, this is a great color, isn't it? You know, if you make light of her comments, she'll do them less, and you'll feel better as a result. You'll feel triumphant, as a matter of fact. Mothers can be one of the biggest drainers, although they may not mean to, they do. Well, I wonder if you could even include a sort of a light, not a confrontation, but acknowledgement. Well, I'm, I, I, well, uh, it sounds like you probably don't like it much, but I really like this sweater. I mean, something that sort of acknowledges that you're yeah. perceiving a dig at it, but at the same time affirming, I like it. 
right. I like it, but in in a ch- it, without charge in your voice, without right. being the five year old or the seven year old who feels assaulted by her mother who's criticizing her. So you just change the tone and the energy of how you interact with your mother, and it means being the bigger person. Your mother is not going to change, but you can. Emily, good luck. Thanks very much for your call.